So uh, first about uh, LDA and QDA, there are also regularized versions thereof. Something wrong? <laughs> Okay, so uh, we had seen that in uh, QDA uh, we had uh, we had estimated a uh, class covariance matrix for each class. So we had uh, sigma one, sigma two, whereas in LDA we had estimated a single covariance matrix sigma pooled for both classes. And uh, since QDA may have too many parameters to estimate in high dimensions, namely uh, something of the order of uh, the number of dimensions squared, you may want to uh, reduce the effective number of parameters. And you can effectively interpolate between uh, QDA and LDA as follows. thing is a little shaky today. We're starting to be overcrowded here. <laughs> okay. So we can uh, interrelate uh, between the, the two as follows uh, by positing a sigma i which now becomes a uh, function of a parameter alpha. And now we take an admixture of uh, the class covariance matrix that we estimated uh, for the individual classes plus one minus alpha times the pooled covariance matrix. So this will bring us from uh, order of p squared parameters to order of p parameters. And if that is still too much, you can uh, further uh, bias LDA towards isotropy as follows. We introduce a second parameter, a beta, and get the following. So this is what we had uh, seen in the previous line. Plus one minus beta uh, essentially uh, times the unit matrix. And here we just need um, a normalizer. So we take the trace. sigma hat i of alpha and divide by the number of dimensions p. So overall, we get a mixture of beta times uh, this LDA QDA uh, matrix plus one minus beta times the identity matrix. And well, what's the, the effect? So if we if we did set uh, beta to zero we would obtain simply uh, a decision surface that runs right through the center of masses of the two classes. So this would be center of mass of class two and center of mass of class one. And this is the solution which we would get for beta zero and alpha zero. Uh, this very primitive classifier is also called the closest mean classifier. We 
because for any point in feature space, it will simply look which of the class centers is closest, and it will predict that class. And then we can have more complicated solutions. Uh, if we estimate the same covariance matrix for both classes, say like that, we would obtain an LDA solution, which would look something like this. So the LDA solution we would obtain for alpha equals 1 and beta equals 1. And then finally we can have a QDA solution where the uh, covariance matrices are no longer restricted to be uh, identical. So we, we can get uh, different, uh, I'm going to plot it here because it's going to mess up the whole thing, but I can then have different uh, covariance matrices and my decision surface will then be something curved. Uh, will be either a parabola or, a, or an ellipsis or so. Some kind of quadric. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, this is just for class one or class two. For the LDA case, you are right. You're right. Thanks. So for the LDA case, alpha should be zero. We want none of the uh, individual class covariance and all of the pooled covariance matrix. Thank you. Any more corrections? Questions? A piece of dimensionality. Anything else? All right. So, and uh, now that you know the k-nearest neighbor and uh, LDA, QDA, uh, you're in not such a bad shape. So, these are already some of the most fundamental classifiers there are. However, they don't work so well if you have uh, many observations in multiple dimensions. And this is where it's useful to either regularize, as we've seen here, or to use some kind of dimension reduction previously.